Every year, half a million people attend the accident and emergency department because of sporting injuries. <laughs> and here's another one. In accident and emergency, nine-year-old Tamsin is waiting to see the doctors. It's my leg, it's very sore and it's swelled up. Oh dear, that doesn't sound good. When I done PE, that's when my whole leg went purple, green and blue. Let's find out exactly how this multicoloured mischief happened. Well, there's two parts to this story, Zand. OK, what's the first? Tamsin was in her Thai boxing class, sparring with her partner, Riyad. Ooh, wouldn't want to mess with her. I know, Zand. They both went to do a Bandai move, a flying kick, but their knees clashed. Ouch! That's not all, Zand. There's more. What? A couple of days later, Tamsin was playing hockey in PE. Who's winning? Never mind that, Zand, because as Tamsin's opponent whacked the ball, his stick accidentally hit Tamsin's shin. On the same leg! Ooh! Double ouch. Here to find out more about Tamsin's troubles is Dr Helen Stewart. If I try and move your ankle... It's obviously quite sore, Chris. Where did that hurt when I did that? Just down there. OK. Well, I'll stop it there, because obviously I'm in a lot of pain, and I think we need to get some x-rays. So it's off to get some snaps to see why her ankle is in agony. After a few photos, Dr Helen delivers the verdict. So I can't see any breaks on the bones, but because of the pain that you're in, we're going to treat you the same as we would if you'd broken something. Okay. Which means pot on the leg. No! <laughs> pot is another name for a plaster cast, and I don't think it's what Tamsin was hoping for. No sports for a little while. Oh, my... I know. No tie <laughs> boxing and no... <laughs> the cast will make her more comfortable. It'll help the pain and help her to heal. Tamsin's having a back slab, which supports the back of her leg and allows for swelling. Mm, I, so I think we've got a pot star on our hands here, Zand. Hospitals are good, hospitals are bad, and they put me in a pot and I'll be good to go. Tamsin's got talent. She'll need to come back for a checkup on that painful pain. Find out later how she gets on. But bones can go wrong too. In the lower half of your leg, you've got two bones. The tibia, which is here, that's your shin bone, and then a smaller bone off to the side, the fibula, that one there. It's easy to break these and it's quite common. Footballers do it, skiers do it, you probably know someone yourself who's done it. And it's also quite easy to fix this usually. Doctors will pull the leg straight, put it in a plaster cast, and you can be almost as good as new in a few weeks. But what happens if you don't have a plaster cast? Take a look at this. This person broke their leg 200 years ago and they didn't see a doctor. Now, it's a terrible break. He would have been in terrible pain and he would have had a very bad limp. But what's incredible about this is the bone has actually regrown and tried to fix itself. So we know from that that this guy lived probably for several years after his injury. Amazing. How much does the average adult skeleton weigh? Is it as much as A, one car tyre, B, five BMX bikes, or C, 15 bricks? The answer is A, one car tyre. Our skeleton only makes up about 15% of our overall body weight. The rest is our muscles, guts and blood. And talking of skeletons, now it's time for Investigation Ouch. So what do you think the inside of a bone looks like? This is an animal's thigh bone, and I'm going to cut it in half and show you. You can see how amazingly strong bone is by the fact that I have to use a saw to cut through it. Oh, there we go. Yeah, look at that. That's perfect. So it looks like rock, but actually, your bones are as alive as any other part of your body. Inside the bone is a web of fibres, and that's what gives bones their amazing strength. These spongy fibres can absorb lots of pressure, meaning our skeleton is one of the toughest parts of our body. So bones are incredible, but they're also incredibly complex. And in here, engineers are growing them. Meet engineering expert Dr Michelle Oyen. She's so interested in the structure of bones that she's built these robots made out of Lego so they can make artificial bones in a lab. 
So Michelle, why are bones so amazing? Bone itself has really fantastic physical properties, especially for something of its weight or density. It's really stiff, it's really strong, and it's really tough, and resistant to breaking. So Michelle, what are you doing here? We're dipping a screw into four different beakers. Two of them just have water, and the other two have some protein from your body, and also some calcium in one jar, and in the other jar we have some chemicals called phosphate. So the little piece of metal there is being dipped in these liquids, but you're getting a solid bone out of it. Yeah, it's forming, it's growing itself as we dip, so we go over and over and over again, and the layer gets thicker and thicker and thicker. So why are you doing this? For surgeries, you could take a screw, which are used in surgeries when you have broken bones to hold your bones together, but the biological cells in your body don't really like the metal. And so if you put a bone coating on the screw, then those cells would basically not see the metal. But Michelle is an engineer and thinks she can take her homegrown bones and make something much more spectacular. We're interested in building things, and so we think it's got a lot of applications for maybe making skyscrapers. That's amazing. You're actually taking the kind of inspiration from the human skeleton to do something completely different with it. Absolutely, and it makes sense because we've evolved over millions of years, and this is the structural material that holds us up, so it absolutely makes perfect sense that we might be able to make new things where it's holding them up. In fact, remember the web-like pattern of fibres we saw inside the bone earlier? Well, it's this same pattern which was the inspiration behind the structure of a very famous landmark, the Eiffel Tower in Paris. Isn't it amazing to think that one day we could actually be living in buildings made out of bone? But these are small beginnings, and after 24 hours, this is the result of the robot's work in the lab. So it really looks like a real bone, doesn't it? Yep, because it's made of the same stuff. This tiny bone is the final product, and it's almost exactly the same as the bones in your body, but there's one crucial difference. It's not alive, it's inanimate. The bones in your body have living cells in them that allow them to grow and mend if you break them. Yeah, man. Ouch. On Operation Ouch, we've seen lots of patients coming into the hospital. It's been a few years since I actually worked in accident and emergency myself, but today I'm going on duty at the Royal Manchester Children's Hospital Emergency Department with Professor Simon Card. Open 24-7, this department sees more patients an hour than any other part of the hospital. This casualty is 15-year-old Joe, who's been in a bike accident. So Joe's come into hospital by ambulance. He was cycling down a hill really fast. One of his brakes didn't work, and he crashed into a people carrier. No one in the car was injured, but the car was badly damaged. And that means we have to be really careful that he doesn't have serious internal injuries. One, two, three. So Louise is just feeling down Joe's back, making sure he hasn't got any fractures there. Were you wearing a helmet? No. That's one thing, kids, wear your helmet. Are you going to wear a helmet from now on? Yes. Are you going to get your back brake fixed? I'm going to scrap the bike and get a decent one. So far, in the contest of Joe versus the car, Joe's in a good mood and he hasn't got any obvious injuries. So, at the moment, it's Joe 1, car nil. Next, we have to check for internal injuries with an ultrasound machine. So what we're looking for is if there's any blood there. Yeah. So that shows up as black um, in the wrong place. Now I can't see any at the moment, so that's good news. So the ultrasound scan of Joe's internal organs is completely normal. So that's Joe 2, car nil. So we take Joe to x-ray, where we can take some pictures of his bones and uh, see if any of the bones that are tender are actually broken. We can take pictures of Joe's pelvis, so the bones of his hips. We're then going to take pictures of his spine, then his chest, and then the spine going up to his neck. OK. Right, Joe, that's that picture done. What we're trying to do here is get a picture of the spine just as it's at the back of the skull. And so to photograph it well, we need to open the mouth Take a picture of the vertebra right back there. It's hard with this. I know it's very hard, but you're doing superb. Right, good lad. That's done. 
Professor Simon takes a careful look at Joe's x-rays. I think those look OK. Um, we will also get the radiologists, who are specialists, who do spend all their time looking at x-rays. Mm -hmm. They're really experts at that. Well, mm -hmm. They'll have a look at these as well. And all being well, we'll take everything off and get him set up. Brilliant. His mum said he was made of steel, which might actually be right. She might be, yeah. Are you surprised by this, that we've got a smashed up people carrier and a perfectly well 15-year-old boy? Um, I guess I'm a bit surprised, um, but I'm also quite pleased, really. Yeah. So, astonishingly, Joe's x-rays are completely normal. So that is Joe oh. 3, Carnell. Ready to go home? Yeah. So in the man versus car contest, we have a winner. Yeah. <laughs> it's a great result, but it's been a lucky escape for Joe. Things could have been a lot worse. So make sure you wear a helmet from now on. When you get injured, your body is brilliant at mending itself. This next boy should know he's always having accidents. There's a bone to break, he'll break it. There's a knee to graze, he'll graze it. There's an ankle to sprain, he'll sprain it. He's the unluckiest kid. Look out for that squirrel. When you break your arm, it's called a fracture, and it gets put in plaster to keep it in place. But underneath, the real fixing is done by you. Wow! Your broken bone leaks blood, and it contains special building blocks, including fibres from proteins called collagen and cartilage. <laughs> they build a temporary bridge called a callus, and it stays in place for about three weeks. Then, a specialist team called the osteoblasts move in. These are cells that make tiny bits of bone that set like cement. After a few weeks, your bones have repaired themselves. Your cast will be off and you're as good as new. Just watch out for squirrels. Uh-oh! Oh, dear. 